There's the rice, the staff of life in the Philippines. There are quiet villages where farmers till the soil and grow the rice. And the lakes and harbors where fishermen tend their nets. There are mountains that rise high out of the sea on almost every island. Dense forests cover over half of this tropical nation. There are the rivers to bathe in and to carry the products of the land to the markets in the towns and cities. There is Manila, the capital and pride of the nation, the largest city of the Republic of the Philippines, a nation of about 7,000 islands, most of them small and uninhabited, with a land area nearly the size of California, but with almost twice its population. The geographic proximity to Japan and Red China and the distance from the traditionally friendly United States play a crucial role in the future of the young republic. Of the islands, the largest and most populous is Luzon in the north. In the middle, there are hundreds of smaller islands known as Visayas. And in the south lies the second largest island, Mindanao. These islands became the independent republic of the Philippines in 1946. Its democratic system of government is patterned largely after that of the United States. To this day, we can see the traces of the almost 400 years of Spanish rule over the Philippines. But even more striking is the more recent influence of the United States. Soon after Magellan discovered the Philippines in the early 1500s, missionaries began converting the Filipinos to Christianity. By the time the United States acquired the islands from Spain in 1898, some 90% of the people were Catholic. The influence of Spain is still seen today, not only in religion, but also in architecture and language. But now that influence is shared with the public schools, which are probably the most important contribution of the United States to the development of the modern Philippines. A system of schools extends to the tiniest and most remote villages. The number of Filipinos who can read and write is high by comparison with other Asian nations. Since more than 80 dialects are spoken, attempts are being made to create a national language. The Tagalog dialect is the basis of this national language, but English is still the language of education, government, and the city marketplace. Someday, when the history of the Philippines of this period will be written, the schools will certainly be remembered as playing a most significant role. Scientists from the United States and Europe have done much to help improve standards of health and sanitation. Their efforts have been requested by the government of the new nation. A healthier generation is growing up to enjoy sports, that have been brought in by people from other lands. Filipino athletes and movie stars take their place as heroes to the Filipino children, alongside of heroes from the United States and Europe. Seven out of 10 Filipinos live in small villages called barrios, farming their own land, which may vary from five to eight acres in size. Even a poor Filipino farmer has grown up in the Christian tradition of individual freedom. His desire for his country's right to democracy and independence is both strong and sincere. He's now struggling to master the economic responsibilities that go along with political freedom and independence. Life is simple in the barrios by our standards, but by Asian standards, except for Japan where standards are much higher, the Filipinos are well off. Many live in bamboo houses raised on poles to protect them from the dampness and provide better ventilation in a humid and rainy climate 
with temperatures in the low 90s a good part of the year. A cow, or much more often a carabao, a pig, and a few chickens are the usual livestock. A single village well usually serves all the people of the village. Rice to the Filipino is what wheat is to us. During the growing season of from five to six months, the paddy fields must be weeded and protected from birds and field rats. At harvest time, the kernels of rice are usually separated from the stalks by the ancient method of trampling or beating. 